Hi, this is Chad from Rikard Electronic Innovations. I'm back again here to do a little bit of a walkthrough comparing the Green Star 2630 display and Green Star 4640 display. A lot of our current documentation for the GreenFit system shows screenshots and values for the 2630 display, but uh, we're getting more and more questions that pop up regarding the 4640 display, uh, general menu navigation, and where to find the equivalent settings, where to change these things. So. We thought we'd make a short video just to compare the two and show where to navigate to in each display side by side for the common values that are mentioned in the GreenFit installation and setup documentation. So to begin we have two screens in front of us. On the left hand side it's a 2630 display. On the right hand side is a 4640. As you can see when a GreenFit system is powered up you will see a warning indication like you see right here. On the left and on the right, they're pretty much the same, same warning, same indication. On the 2630, you'll have to hit icon or soft key letter F on the top right hand corner. On the 4640, just hit accept. And from here, uh, you'll be taken to a run page or a guidance page, depending on the, the layout configuration of the display. On the 2630 display, to load up your different applications or different menu options, you want to select the bottom right hand corner button, the up arrow with the rectangles. And from here you'll see a bunch of different menus to select from. Uh, we currently do not have a GreenFit controller hooked up to this. This is actually a simulation running off of uh, uh, John Deere's Display Simulator server. So we won't walk through how to get there other than there would be a box right here typically. If a GreenFit's loaded up, you'll have another icon right here saying uh, GreenFit or GF with a picture of a steering wheel. On the 4640 display, if you needed to navigate to the GreenFit menu, uh, you would actually hit the Isobus VT menu, and that will load up all Isobus object pools, as well as the Starfire page, or Starfire screen. Uh, when you select this, right now the Starfire is loaded up, but if there are any other object pools, you would select this bottom right hand corner button with the up arrows and the rectangles, very similar to what you see on the 2630. And when you select that, You'll see your Starfire, you'll see your GreenFit controller, and possibly some other ISO implements, and they'll be listed here to pick from. Go ahead and select the X buttons to back out to the main screen. So one of the first things that you would do in setting up a GreenFit system is setting up your equipment, uh, whether it be a tractor or combine sprayer. Um, for today, we're just gonna set up a generic tractor. On the 2630, you want to select the GS3 box. So again, you would hit this bottom right hand corner button to get these rectangles, then select GS3. And from here on the right hand side, there's a sub menu that says equipment. You want to select that. On the 4640 display to access your equipment menu, you'll want to select the menu button in the bottom right hand corner. Then on the left hand side, select applications and then select equipment manager. On the 2630 display, you want to select your machine type. We'll just select tractor. You will have to give it a name. I'm just going to give it a generic name, T for test. And from after entering in model and name, you should be able to enter in the appropriate equipment offsets. On a 4640 display, we can go ahead and we can add an imp or add a tractor. We can just have this one already that says tractor. We can also create a new profile, make it a tractor, and give it a name. We'll give it the same name that we gave it over here on the 2630. And uh, from here, then we can enter in both the tractor type and the offset information. On the 2630, for changing offsets, you just select change offsets in the offset uh, box here. And from here, now you have a selection for non-steering locations. So if it's a center articulated tractor, you pick front axle. If it's a mechanical front wheel assist type tractor, row crop tractor like this, you would pick rear axle. And the same on the 4640, but instead of it being under non-steering location, you would select tractor type and now you have row crop tractor, track tractor, articulated tractor. And so 
you want to select the appropriate value or the appropriate uh, option. And it should be pretty straightforward, but if there are questions, contact a Reichart product specialist, or it'll be noted in the green fit installation documentation. For now, we're just going to pick a standard row crop tractor. The next thing that we'll want to enter into the system would be our equipment offsets. If you look at any of our GreenFit documentation, uh, it lays out what these offsets are for. Primarily, or the most important thing for the GreenFit system is going to be offset B Bravo, which is the inline distance from the fixed axle, fixed axle to the receiver. So here, we're going to go ahead and just put in a value of 60 inches, for example. Over we'll on the 4640, you have a box that says GPS offsets. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And here you'll see also a very similar layout. You have your lateral offset, which would correlate with your lateral offset, which is A in the 2630. It is value 1 on the 4640. Your inline offset, value 2, is the same as value B, Bravo, in the 2630. So we're going, going to go ahead and put this in as well put in either five feet or you could put in 60 inches. It automatically populates here. On your 2630 you have an icon C Charlie and it's a distance from your fixed axle to your hitch or your implement connection point. That value is not displayed here in the 4640. That would be in a separate menu. Your height is D Delta. So for example, let's say your receiver is 140 inches off the ground. You'll want to put that in right there. And we'll do the same here in the 4640. Go over to inches, 140. And then from here, go ahead and just press OK. On the 2630, press Accept. You can save it. And hit OK on the 4640. And on the 2630, it's already set in place. Um, we just need to navigate to the next menu. Also, for your equipment offsets, you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, you have a machine turning radius and a turning sensitivity in the 2630 display. There is not an identical correlating value in the 4640. There is a couple advanced settings in the Green Star guidance on the 4640 in relation to in-ground turning radius as well as some turning sensitivity values. Um, we won't address those in full detail during this video, but uh, just wanted to provide that extra information for awareness. For the 2630, make sure that you enter in the recommended turn radius and turning sensitivity as documented in the green fit installation instructions. The next thing that we'll want to address is adjusting the advanced sliders or uh, green star advanced settings. And to adjust those, where we need to go on the 2630 will be the bottom right hand corner button and then go back to your green star page and then you'll actually want to navigate to guidance. And when you're in guidance, the first fine tune adjustment value that you can make is your steer sensitivity, right? which right now is at 70. And that value is going to vary based on machine profile. On the 4640 display, you'll want to go to Guidance. And on the left hand side, you'll have a picture of an auto steer icon with a couple numbers. If you click on this box, it'll take you to your steering optimization page and you'll notice the first value shown is your steering sensitivity. This correlates directly with the steer sensitivity on a 2630. Be aware that there are some versions of 4640 software where the range of this value does vary from instead of 50 to 200 it varies from 0 to 1000. However in current software most commonly you'll see that 50 to 100. Beyond that, there are additional advanced settings, and these are the same advanced settings that you will find in the 2630. In the 2630, you need to go to Guidance Settings, Auto Track Advanced Settings. And they may not be in the same order, just pay attention to the actual titles on each. So, for example, we have a line sensitivity track, line sensitivity tracking on the 2630. 
It's the third icon down or the third value down on the 4640 line sensitivity tracking. I've noticed that the order of these can also vary based on uh, software version, things like that. But just be aware that all these values and there are a total of seven values in the 4640 when you include the main sensitivity. They're all on both displays. So you have the four values here in the first page of the 2630 plus the two here. And then when you add in the main sensitivity, which is not on the 2630 advanced page, that gets you your seven as well. So steer sensitivity here, and then your other six fine tune adjustments are in the sliders. And in the case of the 4640, you go ahead and just select this box on the left and you have all seven on one page. Another important group of settings to verify would be related to the Starfire receiver, and it's important to check these and make sure they're accurate for proper performance of the GreenFit system. To access your Starfire settings in the 2630, you would select the bottom right-hand corner button again, and you should have an icon for the Starfire as one of your main menu options, and go ahead and select that. On the 4640 display, you'll need to exit out of any menus that you're in, and then on the bottom bar, you'll need to select Isobus VT. And if it's not loaded here, you'll have to select the bottom right hand corner and then select it from the list of object pools. When you select Starfire, as you can see on both the left and the right, it's the same user interface from this point going forward. The important values for a Starfire receiver in regards to GreenFit performance are in the Setup tab. So we'll do this on both sides. First thing we want to verify will be your mount direction. We want to make sure it's consistent with the mounting and the install instructions in the GreenFit system. You can see it's the same here, forward. And then in a normal GreenFit scenario, you'll have a four aft value, and this can be entered in. And follow your GreenFit documentation in regards to what value to put into this. So for example, we'll say for a wheel tractor, we're going to put in the same value as the B Bravo or the two inline offset. And uh, for your height, put in your measured height. And you'll want to do a TCM calibration as well. Um, you wanna make sure it's set to on, and then you would hit calibrate. And it would be the same process over here on the 4640. When it's running on the simulator, it appears that some things are grayed out. Uh, in a real life scenario with the tractor hooked up, these will not be grayed out. You'll be able to adjust these values and you'll be able to run a TCM calibration. Be aware that when you move the Starfire, or if you move the Starfire from the tractor with GreenFit to a John Deere tractor or a John Deere combine or sprayer, uh, these settings will get changed based on the profile in the tractor, combine, or sprayer. So when you put it back onto the tractor or piece of equipment with GreenFit installed, you want to make sure you go, go back into here and again verify these values and do the TCM calibration. And again, these values are going to be dictated based on both measuring and or recommendation in the green fit installation instructions. So one example would be on a uh, certain harvester profiles, we may have a 4 f value of zero, for example. So pay attention to those documentation values and make sure you follow those directions. Another important thing regarding operation of the system would be the AutoTrack status pie. And we're going to go ahead and just jump in on both displays and kind of compare the two. So on the 2630 display for getting a working AutoTrack system, you'll want to go to the Green Star page. In the 4640 display, you'll want to go to the Guidance tab at the bottom. At the bottom center of the 2630, you'll see the pie. On the top left hand corner, it's the same pie on the 4640 display. As you can see right now, you have a picture of a wrench with a book on the 2630, and you have one pie slice filled. On the 4640, you have the one pie slice as well. We're going to go ahead and on the 2630, hit the book with the wrench, 
and it's going to give you a listing of things that may not be meeting requirements or there may be something in the green fit preventing it. Uh, if it's green fit, go into the green fit page and just verify there's no active error codes. Um, but here it says AB line defined no. So based on that information, we need to go back to guidance and we need to set a track. We'll go ahead and make it a new track. And we're just going to do an A plus heading. So we'll just set our point with a zero degree heading and save it really quickly. And now you can see our green star pie is now up to two slices. I'm going to do the same over here on the 4640. So I'm going to set a track. And actually, even before I do that, I'm going to cancel. Right now it's one pie. If I try to enable it, it says it cannot be, and it gives me a listing of what's preventing it. So right now, guidance track must be selected. So we'll go ahead and set track, new track, and we'll do A plus heading as well. And zero degree heading, we're gonna set our A point and say we're done. So same situation here. And now we have two slices, and in this case, the enable automatically kicks on. You can set it to off, and it'll go back to two slices, configured, or back on to on, three slices. On the 2630, you just click on the box in the bottom, and you click on it again, and it toggles. Very similar fashion. And then from here, you would need to engage the system through either the green fit supplied engage button or through the factory engage button on the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and run the armrest. I'll speed her up a little bit. So we're moving a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and engage it. And now you can see we're auto tracking. And we'll do the same over here, just to show what it looks like. We'll speed her up. Going five mile an hour, hit engage, and we're auto tracking. So same process, uh, same general flow, just different locations to find this information.